Good morning and welcome to this week's Wednesday with Warburst. We're going to talk this uh, morning about uh, health protocols in Altus Public Schools. So before we get to do that, I want to introduce you, if you don't know, uh, head nurse Jennifer Pickett. Uh, she's been in Altus Public Schools for 25 years, so she's uh, been here for a long time and has done a great job for many, many years. And so, Jennifer, tell us uh, kind of your assignment as far as what schools you spend most of your time at. And then let's talk about uh, the nurses that work with you. Okay, so I'm assigned to junior high school and then the elementary school. Um, this year we were able to hire an LPN for the high school. Her name's Amy Maws. And so now we have at the high school, I believe it's 900, almost a thousand kids. Yeah, we're right at a thousand. So she's there. I check in with her at the end of the day usually. Um, and then we have Lauren Tyson. She's the nurse at Rivers in primary. And then Jordan Walker is at Intermediate School and I'm trying to think, Intermediate School AECC. So, and then we've started, um, we're going to start on Wednesdays meeting back at the end of the day at the high school just, just to kind of touch base and see what everybody's doing. That's so, a good idea. Yeah. Um, you know, in the past, I know one time we had two. Right. And then we added the third one. And After now we, COVID, we added the third. And yeah. then we've been fortunate enough to all. all have the fourth nurse, which is great. It seems like um, more students have more medical, uh, not issues, that but needs, needs mm -hmm. than they have in the past. Tell us about some of the things that y'all do on a regular basis every single day. I know you have lots of mm -hmm. scheduling things, especially around lunchtime. Right, right. We have diabetics, and so um, there's two of us that have diabetics at school that we see twice a day. So every meal time, they're type one diabetics and so we give them insulin you know and figure out the coverage for them um, at two of our schools so it's kind of hard you know to go to rivers and then primary elementary can um, be everywhere at the same time right right <laughs> and so it's nice there's four of us um, and then the meal times you know will change sometimes so um, that makes it hard but um, yeah, that's one thing you all do that I've, I've learned is you all study the menu as much as the yes. parents do to kind of be proactive in what your your yeah. children are going to need. Yes, for your and that's, that's the main thing is figuring out you know what the student's going to eat that day and doing the carb count for them because a lot of our students do their own shots. Um, we're just helping them mainly with the math, but um, we have a new program that's going to come out that's going to help us with the carb count a lot pretty soon here. So, wow. um, but yeah, we do breakfast and lunch, um, and then just seeing all the sick kids in between um, our teachers. You know, we do. Sometimes we do the workers' comp stuff, you know, if we have yes. a teacher get hurt. Um, and right now, the kids have just been, you know, a little bit sick. And so, it's the fall, so they're going to be, you know. And we we have a list of things on our website. Um, Amanda's going to put that up there for you. Um, different reasons to stay home. Right. Um, if you want me to go through some of those. Sure, yeah. Okay, so. Kind of be proactive with not right. spreading things um, right. at school. So if a student has fever, what we go by is a fever of 100 degrees, and they need to be fever-free for 24 hours. Um, so if I send a student home and they're, you know, they have a fever, they don't need to come back the next day, and we let the parents know that they okay. need to be fever-free. So we don't want them spreading, you know, different things. Um, but on the website, we have a little sheet talks about severe cough, um, abnormal breathing problems. We have a lot of di or not diabetics, um, asthmatics. Mm -hmm that we help, um, you know, this time of year is kind of bad for asthma. Um, vomiting or diarrhea within the 20, last 24 hours. Sometimes kids may eat something that doesn't agree with them. I mean, and we can kind of tell if they're running around and they've had like snotty nose or something and throw up, then. Um, something a little more than some, that. Yeah, it needs to be more than that. Yeah. You know, a couple of times, obviously sick. You can really tell when they're sick. Right. Um, rash or oozing sores, eye infection. I don't ever say this is pink eye. I mean, my eyes are red in the morning, you know, and I do eye drops. But um, if their eyes are oozing or real swollen, they they need to probably get a note from the doctor. Right. So um, we want our students to be at school as much as possible, just like we do our employees. But we also have to be smart enough to know when we might be contagious. 
the students mm -hmm. may be contagious and then it spreads and it, it becomes a problem for a lot of different people. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that we have these protocols that we go by. I know when you're not available at some of the sites, the secretaries kind of step in and they take over as the nurse or the right. one making the decisions or the principal helping make the decisions. But it'd be very nice if our faculty and staff and our parents would just uh, follow the protocols right. and uh, just keep us as healthy as uh, we possibly can. Uh, also, some of your other duties I know, especially here at the junior high, it's important that uh, students have a certain shot by certain times and you all keep up with the shot record, yes. have contact with parents as far as who needs what shots and when we have new enrollees. Tell us a little right. bit about that, right. about vaccinations. Right, um, for students coming in, they need to have their four-year-old shots, um, so that's the younger schools that's hard at the beginning of the year to get all that in because they're required to have shots to attend school in Oklahoma. So my seventh graders, they have to have a Tdap shot. And so at the beginning of the year, there's a lot of um, phone phone calls, notes going home about them getting their tetanus, the tetanus booster is what it is, but that's for seventh grade. Okay. And so um, it's an ongoing thing. If we have a student move in from another country, they may not have an MMR. So they get one and they go back in another month to get the second. Okay. And so, um, and we send them to the health department usually and they're real helpful out there. Because, and they may have other services that they need that you know we can't help them with. So the health department gets with them. Right. So, so you and two others are RNs and then we have an LPN. Do you all do uh, regular training uh, each year that kind of keeps you up to date on certain things? I know you all went to the health symposium the last two yes. years here at WSC. Yes, and that was great. Usually at the beginning of school, there's a school nurse, um, Oh, um, like a conference conference and this year we did it um, just online but it's through the Department of Ed and Department of Health so okay. and that's always um, good information you know because sometimes there's not very many school nurses in Oklahoma not as many as like Texas or so and right. so I think in Texas they're used to want one at every school but it's good to get with other you know school nurses right. and talk but yes. your, your positions like many of the positions we have in the district we don't have enough uh, enough staff, we need more nurses, we need more teachers, we, we, there's always more and more and more, and it's hard to get your training mm -hmm. because we can't do without you, we need you here. Right. Uh, same with the teachers, it's, it's so hard to get the training because we need you at school because you're so important. Mm -hmm. uh, so we appreciate you working around the schedules, making sure your diabetics and all the different students are taken good care of uh, when you do have to be gone. And we do have trained staff, They it's a state law, we have to have somebody in the building trained oh, yeah, and so we have that. our what we call our diabetic helpers that help us and so if i'm you know having trouble in another school and um my diabetics dropping here i can call her to go check oh that's awesome so, i forgot about that, that know, just, we always have a backup in the last so. couple of years that's yes right. yes probably yeah. last three or four and yeah. that kind of makes me think also about cpr there's mm -hmm. tell us about cpr at so, each site okay so cpr um we have made way more training than we have to. I think we have to have one certified, one non-certified per building. But at the beginning of the year, we um, certify bus drivers, um, special ed aides. Some of the special ed teachers are um, several per per building. Um, but we do all that at the beginning of school. We have several coaches. Mm -hmm. All the, the, yes. And trained on the AED. The AED. The, AED. the defibrillator. Yeah, yeah has yeah. to be a part of it. And what's good? Our cards are good for two years. So we have an overlap and so the next year we'll catch you know the new ones coming in or the ones that are expiring so. yeah well thank you for all the information mm -hmm. and your expertise and your hard work about the schools mm -hmm. i want to wish the uh, palm squad uh, good luck at state they have done amazing this uh, school year like they normally do but wish them the very best of luck at state competition and also our cheerleaders our cheerleaders are going to state again so hopefully we'll bring home two state channels this weekend and as always may god continue to bless out this public schools